Welcome back to Come, College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Reverend Jewel Williams here with our Wednesday Word for January 23rd. Our theme for the year is Fear, False Evidence Appearing Real. And we're continuing our lesson about Gideon. And today's lesson is Gideon, God's Preparation. Our theme scripture is found in Psalms 34 and 4. And it states, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. We will be reading, I'll be reading from Judges 6 verses 30 through 40. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for preparing us, each one of us, to step into those unexpected places, into those callings that you have for our lives, for those those assignments that you have scheduled for each one of us to face this year for 2013. So Father, I pray that you would just have your way Help us to step out and realize we are called to be mighty warriors. In Jesus' name we pray. Allow your word to minister to our hearts. Amen. And it reads starting in verse 30. The people of the town demanded of Joash, bring out your son. He must die because he has broken down Baal's altars and cut down the Asher poles beside it. But Joash replied to the house to crowd around him. Are you going to plead Baal's case? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. If Baal really is a god, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. So because Gideon broke down Baal's altar, they gave him the name Jerob Baal that day, saying, let Baal contend with him. Now all the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples joined forces and crossed over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jerel. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Gideon. He blew a trumpet, summoning the Abarites the, to follow him. He sent messengers throughout uh, Manasseh, calling them to arms, and also into Asher and Zebulon and Nephthah, so that the two went up to meet them. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hands as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hands, as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece. But this time make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered with dew. That night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry. All the ground was covered with dew. Thank God for his work. Now, we're continuing as we look at Gideon. Last week, we were talking about Gideon's fear and how he was not able to... Well, he did what he what he was supposed to, but yet he was still limited by fear. But this week, we want to talk about how God is continuing to do the preparation in Gideon's life. Just as he continues to work on us, when many of you, if you stepped out in in your calling or whatever it is God called you to do, if you look back, you'll see that at this point in your life, you're probably a little more bolder than you were when you initially stepped out. You were more fearful or you weren't sure. And that is how Gideon was. But yet God is continuing to prepare him and he does the same for us. So the first point we want to make is God gives us his spirit so we can accomplish his requirements. And that is so key. We see that in verse 34. It says, then the spirit of the Lord came on Gideon. God, we cannot do anything that God requires us to do without the indwelling help of the Holy Spirit. We need God's spirit to help us, to equip us, to teach us, to lead us, to guide us, empower us so that we can do the things that God is calling us to do. And I believe it's just a reminder here that God's spirit is the one working through us that will give us the ability to do that which we're called to do. But even still, even knowing that God's spirit dwells within us and we have that anointing That doesn't mean that fear and doubt still won't come in. And that leads us to the next point. And that is God will continue to confirm his calling. And we see that in verse 36, because Gideon says to God, if you will save Israel by my hand, if you have promised, look, I just want you to, you know, so he tells God, I want you to place, I'm going to place this wool, this fleece on the threshing floor. And and if, if the dew is only on the fleece, but the ground is dry, then I'll know that you're going to do this. Well, God does do that. God does exactly what he asked him to do. And so he was encouraged, but yet 
even in that encouragement, he still needed more. And that leads us to the next point, which is God does not reject our request, but he does expect us to do what he requires or what he asks of us to do. And we see that in verse 39 because we see that God had, had done what Gideon asked. But then Gideon came back and said, okay, God, don't be angry with me, but I got one more test. If you do this, this time, let the fleece be dry and the ground be covered with dew, and, and, and then I'll do what it is you, you, you're asking me to do. And so what we see is this, and that is that God, he's patient because he, you don't see him reject Gideon. But it's still the point that we have to understand that we can begin to make so many excuses or ask for so many signs that we can push ourselves to the point where God will not be pleased with us. And if you think back on Moses, we talked about Moses. Moses kept going over and over. He kept coming with all these different excuses. And, and the scripture talk about how finally God, you know, became angry at Moses. And so we see here, you know, what's the difference? Why was he angry at Moses and not angry at Gideon? And I believe the point is this. Gideon had already started to step out. He had already done the first thing that, that God told him to do. And we saw that, that, you know, last week. He stepped out. He went and made the sacrifice. And so now he's preparing for the next, you know, battle. And that's how it is with our lives. You know, we, we face these things one step at a time. God will send us to these assignments where maybe we need to just talk to one person and we're afraid and we ask God, well, you know, I, I need you to show me, give me confirmation and we'll go ahead and do it. And then it'll turn out successful. And then we go, whoo, well, yeah, God really did do that. And then God gives the next bigger thing. Well, now we have to go talk to five people or we have to go talk to a classroom or we have to go stand in front of a church. So it gets bigger and, and, and then the bigger it gets. We still sometimes will have that little bit of self-doubt, that self-doubt conversation with ourselves. And so I appreciate that God, he will allow us those requests. But when it's all said and done, he still requires us to do the things that he calls us to do. So we have to be careful. We want to, we don't want to get into that Moses place where Moses hadn't even stepped out. He just kept giving all the reasons why he couldn't do it. So we don't want to get caught there where we're just giving God all these excuses for why not. But we want to be at the place where we're stepping out, even if we're a little afraid, even if we're not sure, but with the assurance that God will be with us. So what is our life lesson? Our life lesson today is God's time of preparation removes the doubt and fear from our lives so that we can accomplish God's plan. Again, God's time of preparation removes the doubt and fear. This is what Gideon is going through. Gideon, he's doing He's asking God for confirmation, but yet every time he gets confirmation, I believe God is then saying, now go ahead and do the next thing. And so God's time of preparation removes the doubt and fear from our lives. And so the reason why he does that is, is so that we can accomplish God's plan. And so my question to you today is, are you allowing God to do the preparation in you? Even if you're not sure, even of the task that you've been asked to do seems too big for you you're just looking at the circumstance you're looking at what appears before you but God wants you to take your focus off the situation the circumstance or even the assignment but he wants you to focus on him because just as he spoke to Gideon's life and told him he was a mighty warrior if God is God said you're a mighty warrior then you have to just believe by faith that what God has said you are you are. He doesn't make any mistakes. And he's not looking at who you are now. He's looking at who he's going to create in you as you allow yourself to go through God's time of preparation. And so again, God gives us a spirit so we can accomplish what is required of us. He'll continue to confirm his calling. And he doesn't reject us when we ask him to confirm himself with us. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. And I just pray for somebody today, Lord, that you would continue to confirm who they are and not let doubt or self-talk talk them out of being obedient to what you've called them to do. Allow them, Father, to step into your time of preparation so they can become who you've called them to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.